Hey everyone! In this video, we'll be making our very own modified plant in Plants vs. Zombies using DLL injection. This video was primarily made to help people with absolutely no background in modding AVZ take part in the currently ongoing modding contest, more details in the description if you're interested, so it'll discuss a lot of things that some might consider trivial. However, this video is split into chapters, so if you feel like you already know something, feel free to skip around the video to not waste your time. So without further ado, let's get started. The goal of this video is to create Leynut. She is inspired from the Genshin Impact character Layla, who is a shielder, which is why she's a walnut, and has a special ability where she gains a star for each skill her allies use, and upon reaching 4 stars, she releases a special attack. This is basically what Leynut will do, but replace skills with Snowpeas, as she will absorb Snowpeas in a 3x3 area around her, gaining a star for HP that passes, and releasing an attack, damaging, chilling, and briefly freezing zombies in a 3x3 area around her upon reaching 4 stars. But before we can do that, we will need some tools first. So we will need Visual Studio with the C++ development pack. If you do not have that already, I left a link to a video tutorial on how to download Visual Studio with the C++ development pack in the description. If you already have that, however, head to my GitHub and download the plant mod template release, link in the description, and afterwards unzip the contents and open the .sln or solution file to get started. Head to the side and open the functions.cpp file, and this is actually where most of our code will be written. As you can see, there's a ton of functions in the file already, but before we can start adding our own code to it, we have to first understand some fundamentals of how Plants vs. Zombies works. The game goes through two primary phases, the update phase and the draw phase. In the update phase, all game objects such as plants, zombies, and projectiles are quote-unquote updated. This means they perform their actual functions, such as plants shoot and create projectiles, projectiles move, and if they're close enough to a zombie, they collide and damage the zombie, and zombies move and eat plants if they're close enough, etc, etc. All game objects are updated once per frame, and in PVZ, a frame is 1 centisecond or 10 milliseconds long. So, once the update phase is complete, the game then transitions to the draw phase, where all the game objects are drawn. This phase is a little bit more complicated due to the draw order of certain game objects, which could cause some confusion, but don't worry, we won't be doing anything complicated in terms of drawing or handling when there are orders in this video. Okay, so now we can finally start working on the actual code. So, first things first, let's actually classify the things that we need to do. So, what we need to do is we need to make Laynut absorb Snowpeas in a 3x3 radius, and we need to make her gain a new star every time she does so, and we need to make a visual indicator of how many stars she has so that we can, you know, see how many stars she has and when she's going to release her special attack. So first things first, let's start with the uh, absorbing Snowpeas in a 3x3. So this is a functional requirement of a plant. Um, now, in order to do this, which function would we have to change? Well, obviously, it's the plant updating function since it's a plant and, you know, it's an actual functionality that we want to add. We can clearly see that there's an original plant update. Now, if you wanted to remove the plant's original function and overwrite it with your own new function, you would pretty much remove this line. But since we don't want that, we want it to remain a walnut and just add extra things to the walnut's functionality of being a walnut, we're going to go ahead and add code, but keep this line. So here, first things first, we want to check if it's a walnut. So we're going to do if a plant, which is the plant that is currently updating, dot type is equal to a walnut. Wait, no, that's the giant walnut. Then we do something. So here's the extra code for the walnut. Now let's see what we're going to do. So first things first, we want to get Snowpeas in a 3x3 area, so let's go ahead and create a variable for it, call them Snowpeas, and it will be equal to a plant .get projectiles around. And as you can see here, we need to give it a lane range, a column range, and a projectile type, etc. We don't actually need to, get it, to give it any of those, if we just tell it like this. Um, it's by default going to get projectiles in a 3x3 around it, and it's going to get all projectiles. But we don't want that, um, or at least we don't want all the projectiles. We do want a 3x3 radius. So let's go ahead and give it the one uh, lane range. So 
uh, then we also tell it to only include Snopees in the list. And there we have it. So now we have all the Snopees. Now we want to make a for loop, which is basically saying for each Snopee in the Snopees list, which is Snopees, notice that this is plural here and this is singular. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. These are all names. You can call those whatever. You can call this ABC, ABC, and this is just AB. It doesn't matter. Uh, these are just names, but yeah. Uh, just making sure that you understand that these are two distinct things. They're not the same. Snopee and Snopees are two distinct things. So, um, for each Snopee, we want to make it pop, essentially collide. So, Snopee.collide. You can see here that it's asking for a zombie to collide with, but you can actually not give it any zombies, and that way it's going to collide in midair, um, as you have seen in the footage. Um, now, we also wanted to give a, uh, like, for each Snopee, we wanted to add a new star. Now, there is no star counter in the, uh, in a plant, right? Like, if we do plant.star counter, there, there is no such thing, right? So, we need to get a little bit creative. Now, what does, uh, what is a number in plants that walnuts do not use? Well, walnuts do not shoot at all. So, and they do not do an action. So, we can use the action timer right? So we can say action timer plus plus, which is basically like add one to the action timer. And then, um, so here it it makes the Snopee collide, and for each Snopee it adds one to the action timer. That's cool, but we also wanted to release a special attack when it reaches four stars, so let's go ahead and do that. So if a plant dot action timer is equal to 5. Now, why 5? Well, it's because, um, obviously, if it was 4 the last time and it added 1 onto it, then it's going to be 5, so this is when we want to release the attack. Hey everyone, Editing BB here. Um, I kind of forgot when I was making the video to reset the stars back to 0 once they reached 5. Now, don't worry, I fixed this later in the video, but I'm just making sure that in case you were keeping up with me and going like, okay, so the next logical step is to reset the stars back to zero. Do know that you are in fact correct. I'm dumb, I'm sorry. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we want to get all the zombies around the wall, the, the lay nuts. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did for the snow piece. So zombies was a plant dot get zombies around. And this time we don't want to filter zombies by type or anything. So we're just gonna do get zombies around, not give it any parameters. And then, uh, same thing, we want to execute code, we want to make a for statement. So we're gonna do for each zombie um, in zombies. Uh, and essentially what that's gonna do is uh, for each zombie, uh, we're gonna do something. So here, we want to chill each zombie. And if you remember, we said that PVZ works in centiseconds, so if you want to chill the zombie for 5 seconds, you would have to give it 500 centiseconds. And say we want to freeze the zombie for only half a second, so that would be 50. And there we have it. Uh, but that's not all, we also want to damage the zombie, so let's also take some damage uh, of just, let's say, 30 points of damage. Uh, okay, guys, post uh, debugging VB here. Um, it actually turns out I forgot something. Uh, we forgot two things, actually. The first one was we forgot to reset the timer, the action timer, back to zero once she releases the special attack. So she like keeps her stars and she keeps going up and up and up and never meets five stars again. So, yeah, that's bad. And also, we forgot to have a visual indication of the attack itself. So we're also going to put that in here. Um, basically, we just, like, add particles. And uh, the you can feel free to experiment with the particles, but the one I found, like, uh, the best is particle ice ball death. And uh, we just let it go on the plant's X position and Y position. And, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. And that's it. This is actually the functional part of our plant completed within just a countable amount of lines. But that's not all. We also want a visual indicator of how many stars there are. So here, we're going to have to 
insert some images and edit the plant drawing function. So first things first, let's take a look at our image assets. So our image assets, here's our um, PVZ folder. I have made these image assets, which um, Leonard is actually never going to be used, but it's there. Um, here are the stars, right? So Leonard S1, S2, S3, S4, etc. These are supposed to be drawn on top of Leonard when she has one, two, three, four stars respectively, right? So first things first, we're going to go to the very top and we have here game loaded. Now we want to load our images when the game loads. So we're going to go ahead and make image pointer um, and say S1 is what I'll call it. And here we have the images now inside of the game loaded. When the game's loading, we want to load in those images. So we're going to do S1 is going to equal, oops, S1 is going to equal to app get image, just like that. And we need to give it the file name. So here the file name is lanet S1. So we're just going to do that and tell it true for commit bits. No need to know what commit bits is, just give it true. Okay, and as you can see here, we have loaded in all of the images, so that's pretty cool. Now we need to go to the plant drawing uh, here, and what we're going to do is same thing here. We're going to first check if it's a walnut, right? So we're going to check if the uh, plant type is a walnut, and if so, we want to check what uh, action timer it has, what like star counter it has. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to ask if a plant dot m action timer uh, say is equal to one, then we're going to draw the S1 image that we loaded here. So how do we draw an image? Well, we simply just do G, which is the graphics object, dot draw image. And we give it the image, which is S1 in this case. And here we give it the X and Y offset. Now for the X and Y offset, I'm actually going to give it negative 15 and positive 15. And you might ask why that is. This is just an aesthetic choice. It's going to like adjust it, uh, adjust the image by the correct amount. So there's no like real reason behind it, it's just aesthetic appeal. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and repeat this exact same process. So here we're gonna do else if it's equal to two, just draw S2 and so on. And there we have it. And this is actually really all we need to do to make a plant like this using the mod template. So now, how do we actually test this? How do we see the results of this? Well, first things first, make sure that you are on x86 architecture and you are on the release, arch uh, the release build mode. Um, and then go to build and click build solution. Or alternatively, just control shift B and wait for the solution to finish building. And as soon as it finishes building, we're going to head to, there it is, build succeeded. We're going to head to our project, uh, project folder where you downloaded and unzip the contents, and we're going to head into release. We're going to find two DLL files, the version.dll and the plant mod template. Take them both, copy them, and paste them inside of any PVZ folder with your uh, image assets located. Just paste them just like that. And uh, what you need to do here is just hit, like, rename the mod temp plant mod template.dll to just mod.dll in lowercase, just like that. Um, and then we can start the game, and it's going to always uh, work, even on other mods. So if you put this on, say, PVZ Remastered, if it's an ASM mod, it's also going to work on that mod as well. So let's go ahead and test that here. And there it is. And with that concludes our video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed or at least learned something from this video. And uh, I really can't wait to see all of your awesome submissions in the contest. Um, so yeah, uh, for now, just enjoy looking at the plant, I guess. <laughs>